to discuss. I'm joined by Dagmar Hedrick from the European Monitoring Centre for Drugs and Drug Addiction. Thanks for joining us tonight. Now, uh, Denmark, Spain and Switzerland, uh, just some of the European countries uh, that already operate uh, these centres, these shooting galleries, as, as they're known. Uh, are they working? Do they bring down uh, overdose deaths and the rate of HIV infection? I mean, the 60, 60 cities that have established these services in Europe, in, in seven different countries, have very uh, una unanimous experiences with these services. They have helped to uh, reach a very marginalized group of drug users, which could, could not be used with other offers. And uh, they have uh, successfully shown also to reduce risk behavior of, of the users outside the center. So there's an educa educational effect. And there is, of course, a very uh, 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 severe um, effect that people who overdose will immediately get uh, rescued in these centers. And uh, the litter of uh, drug-related litter and syringes distributed in the neighborhoods, like uh, now in Gare du Nord, this situation has been uh, changed by the establishment of these services in many uh, cities in, around Europe already. Critics, though, say that this is the de facto decriminalization of heroin. Uh, shouldn't addicts be encouraged and help to quit hard drugs rather than helping them to take them? Uh, these, the services actually um, are a major bridge into treatment for these populations. And uh, they, are, they, they exist in so different drug situations and drug policy situations in Europe. One cannot say that this is actually um, a sign of decriminalization because it's one mosaic piece in a bigger offer of services. And it has a very specific and very targeted function to reach groups that we cannot reach with other means and to bring them into contact. And in fact, the uh, research shows that uh, many, many users have for the first time been uh, contacted through these services and, and we've been referred into treatment. And rates of detox detoxification treatments and opiate substitution treatment have risen among the population using these services. Uh, there is a lot of public opposition to these centres, though, isn't there? Um, a, a lot of people, they just don't want it in their neighbourhoods. Um, they're worried that uh, the centres will bring more drug addicts into their neighbourhoods uh, and, and with it the problems that drug addiction bring. I mean, uh, this is uh, that, that people do not want drug services in their neighbourhood is unfortunately true, not only for drug uh, consumption rules, but also for other treatment offers that we have or social institutions like homeless centres and so on. But in fact, uh, the rooms have uh, shown they can in a positive way contribute to making a neighbourhood uh, feel safer, to reducing uh, public injecting in particular, of course and also drug-related uh, litter like syringes lying around and bringing other people in danger. And I think they are usually where they have been established very welcomed by the police, who sees this also as an improvement. And the neighborhood situation is usually appeased by the services uh, once they function. All right. Dag However, then oh. each yeah. Time, yeah. Sorry, finish your point. Yes, they need to have a certain capacity to, to bring the relief that these neighborhoods need, actually. If the services are too small in dimension, um, that, uh, that, of course, is a problem. All right. Dagmar Hedrick, thank you very much indeed for joining us.